to remove the filler neck you first have to um, remove the rubber surrounding the filler opening so first you remove this little clamp and pry off the uh, hose I always use like a, a cutting pliers put them around and then skew it upwards that's that's one then cut the tie wrap which holds the breeder hose over here that's all and then the second part is you have to let me zoom in have to press these this rubber surrounding inwards it's easier to use a plier or a screwdriver or whatever and just just put it inwards and upwards to the outside of the car so that's one and at one point it gives this is it then you go to the outside of the car second part's outside the car remove the filler cap then gently pry out the bottom host uh, leak leak I don't know what's called but it, this one this thing pry it upwards remove the the hose that goes down to the to the downside of the lower side of the car first didn't show you that but because it's gone in my car but just pry that one out and then you can just pull it upwards towards you and it just pops off and that's it it's the filler neck rubber part number one two four six five two two So first up is removing the floor of your trunk. Just flip, flip the first part over. And you should see two eight millimeter bolts holding the back side in, the rear in place. <coughs> so that's the front. Then you move over to the first part over there, flip it to the back of the car and that should be six or eight, we'll see in a minute, uh, of the same bolts in, as in the back and then afterwards you can remove the whole floor. So be careful, this is spring loaded. Oh, and as you can see I already removed the bolts once before, I don't know why, but they're gone. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six of these bolts. Afterwards, you can lift the floor and pull it out in the, from the back. So next up is removing the cover of the fuel pump, which is in the top of the fuel tank. Um, mine's fastened with two different bolts, one uh, eight millimeter bolt. But this is, I think, this is the original one. That, so it should be two torques. Uh, screws holding the plate down but probably somebody in the past has lost uh, a few of these bolts and replaced them with whatever they had beforehand so uh, remove the cover it's it's kitted down so you probably need to use some force to pry it loose and there are two cables running through it first is the um, fuel gauge wire and pump wire and this one's I don't know for sure I think it's a speedo speedometer for the newer models so this can be st stay in place but this one has to be disconnected so over here is a lot of uh, can you see it yeah you can see there's another Torx screw for the ground the pump the meter so apparently put it back so you don't lose it then disconnect the pl 
bug. So that's one. And if you pry it through, you can move, remove the whole rubber. And it should pop right through. So that one's undone. And then there are two, three hoses down there. I hope you can see them. It's a little bit dark over there. Maybe if I raise. There you go. Uh, three hoses. Once the I think this yeah this this one should be the 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 main fuel line that runs to the to the secondary pump from the first pump to the in tank pump to the secondary pump that's underneath the car. And this one's a breeder hose. No, I'm sorry, the return hose. And this one's a breeder, sits, which I have blocked off with a uh, nut bolt. Um, yeah, so let's remove them. I'm going to do that off camera now, sorry. So as you can see, I removed the, the hoses, both clamps. My clamps, I've re replaced them, uh, I think a year, maybe two years ago. So mine were pretty good. They were stainless steel also, so I could remove them easily. But the hoses came off a little bit uh, harder. But I managed to get them off. So um, now the, the tech's completely disconnected over here. And over there, the um, fuel neck filler is uh, separated from the side of the car. So now we can go to the uh, other side of the car and lower, lower the tank. I don't know how many fuel is in it because this car has been standing still for two years. So hopefully there's not too much too much in it. Otherwise I'll have to pump pump it out or let it flow in in some kind of canister or whatever. So this is the tank hanging from the on the side of the car. As you can see, my car hasn't got a rear axle. It's over there because I'm renovating it and doing some modifications to the suspension and whatnot. But the tank should should look a little bit like yours, except from all these scuffs, because I've been building a custom exhaust and been fitting it for removing it and fitting it for like a gazillion times. Anyways, uh, there's one bolt over here, held, uh, which has been held in place by this bracket, and there are two bolts over here and over here, and the other side's the same. There's also two bolt bolts. On the side over there one two and the front front of the tank or well, the back actually if you look from the perspective of the car it's, it's not uh, uh, fixated at all so that's all the bolts and I'm going to remove them off camera and then um, uh, put the camera back on the stand when I'm going to remove the tank and you can watch me do that Oh, and one thing that's nice to mention is that the bolts are all 14 millimeter, millimeter, millimeter. So the best thing you can do with these bolts is remove them completely, then put them back and screw them in uh, quite a while. Not not like one one turn, but maybe five, six, seven, eight. So so when the, the tank is probably stuck to the frame rails with. Um, I don't know the English word, bitumen, tar, or whatever. So it's, it's sticking a little bit. I mean, you probably should remove the bolts and put them back uh, all five first and then put a uh, screwdriver, flat screwdriver in between the frame rails and the tank and pry it loose. But you wanna have the bolts in, especially when, when there's still fuel in the tank. So it doesn't fall down from the car completely at once. So it falls in the like maybe uh, 10 mil uh, on the bolts, and then you can put the, your jack, your jack underneath the tank and, and uh, remove finally remove the bolts and lower it slowly and control it. So I uh, found out there's probably still a lot of fuel in this tank, uh, just by feeling how heavy it was when the bolts were almost undone. And it felt quite heavy and a tank I've got one the busted one laying over here is quite it's quite light so I think there's still a lot of it there's still a lot in it so I whipped up an old fuel uh, fuel pump 
with some hoses and I put a hose in the tank and now uh, I'll just wait until this 25 liter canister is filled and then I'm going to remove the tank hopefully it's empty enough then we'll see so I uh, removed as much fuel as possible and uh, put the jack underneath the tank now I'm going to remove the bolts and slowly lower the tank Now it's time to lower slowly. So now it's hanging on the filler neck, over, which is on the other side. And um, yeah, let's check that one out. Over here, you can see the filler neck is hanging on the edge of the um, uh, body panel. And we have to press it down a little bit. And it's hard to do with one hand. Press it down and jank it out and be sure not to pinch your fingers uh, between the body and the filler neck while in the progress so keep your hand on the inside press it down and inside and it comes out because it's stuck on this on this ridge so now we face our next problem because the tank's hanging like this and the filler neck makes this move up so we have this banana shape and we should, in an ideal world, be able to uh, pull it down and up like in a, I don't know, this, this kind of motion but uh, the whole tank will hit the body on the left side so we can't do that. So the trick is to, if you want to keep the filling neck on, you can also remove this uh, um, clamp, I can show you there's a clamp over here you can remove this one and then um, remove the filler neck from the tank and then you can just drop it and pull it out but these clamps are well not expensive but kind of hard to get and the Volvo is especially made for Volvo uh, well at least I haven't seen them on other cars or other applications yet so and they're also always quite rusty so They'll probably break so the best and, and foremost easiest thing to do is to drop the tank use, uh, with the filler neck too but so if we move back to the back of the back side of the car so we have this shape shape like this so what we are going to do hopefully is um, rotate the tank with the upside to the back of the car so when the tanks flat like this we're going to tilt it like this and then we can move it uh, towards the left rear side of the car and then the fill neck is not pointing up but forward like this and we can make this motion because we've got lots of space underneath and in the back of the car especially when there's no uh, muffler silencer in the back I always remove them from my cars because they're stupid and they're always rusty and well stupid so um, let's jiggle it out next and we'll see what happens
but that's it. We've got the complete fuel tank over here. Now let's inspect it. And then use it on the other car. So I tested the tank by uh, putting it on the sides with some fuel in it. There is still fuel in it. And nothing leaked out, so uh, the edges are good. And I cleaned them with a steel brush. As you can see with all of all the debris laying around. And then I um, used bitume, it's Dutch. Uh, tar, some kind of tar. To, uh, smear in all the flat ed flat spots and edges so no moisture will get in and continue the rust process so this will probably be good for a few years and it saves me uh to endure a new tank so i'm happy it's going into this, in this shit box so, okay bye so next up we'll be putting the tank back that will be a little bit hard because there's still fuel in it and um but I, I did clean off all the bolts. Oops. As you can see, it doesn't really matter, but when I'm laying under the car, balancing this tank over my head, I don't want, want to be the bolts to be rusty and hard to get in place. So this will ensure that they will screw in smoothly. So let's see what happens. And if I can pull it off in, on my own. <laughs> Now hanging on its filler neck, now it's able to rotate it upside up and keep it in play with the inflation of the jack. Oh yeah, I forgot one thing. I have to replace the fuel lines before I continue. So a little break from the remounting of the, uh, the fuel tank. Because I had to replace the, the fuel lines from the secondary or main pump. Just depends on your view. Up to the hole. I left, I, I um, bought them a little bit oversized so I can cut them to length when the tanks back in. The reason I did that because was because of the state of the old fuel hose which were probably 30 years old and looked like this. Um, yeah I thought it would be wise to replace them with some new hoses. It's just uh, was about 14 euros with the new hose clamps so that's not a big of a deal so now let's get back to mounting the tank. Well, as you could see, I've got the tank in place, but I forgot something, a little error that has to go through the hole and not like this. So let's try again off camera and I'll be back with you and I'm going to fix
finish our thing. So I've managed to put back in the tank. This time with the filler neck properly aligned through the body. Uh, when doing this, don't forget there's a... I don't know if I can show it. It's a little dark hole. There, over there is a rubber... Well, let's call it a gasket. Uh, that shuts off the filler neck. That, when it goes through the body, and there's a... You can reach it quite properly if you take off the right hand rear wheel and you can reach over there. Oh, it's not properly seated over here, but I'll manage that off camera. So, uh, yeah, that's that. So one of the last, so one of the last pieces of the puzzle is uh, putting this rubber back. So make sure the, um, uh, the body panel is mount uh, seated properly in the in this recess in the rubber otherwise you will get leaks and everything will get wet in your car and rust even harder so let's put this on so I put the rubber back uh, couldn't film this because there's no space for the camera to be and I, I needed both of my hands but um, the trick is to uh, shove the rubber over the neck then punch the, the small drain drain hose through the small hole and then use a flathead screwdriver like this switch hands so you put the screwdriver as close as you can next to the filler neck and then press the rubber is quite thick here so you won't, won't probably won't pierce it anytime soon um, and then at one point you can go inside check if the rubber is all, all, all through and then use the same screwdriver to uh, wiggle it a little bit and then it pops in and then it's properly seated as you can see next up is putting back the drain uh, hose in the bottom it doesn't need a um, clamp or something so just shove it in and then this uh, breather put it back uh, use a new, new tire wrap to secure this green line and then it's onto the fuel hose and we're almost done so back inside the trunk uh, as you can see I have two new hoses they're both different sizes so the, the thin one I can show them next to each other so it, there's not a lot of a difference but there is so the big ones the main fuel line and the thin ones, the return line, and uh, they go. You can also see the um, connectors being different sizes. So the the big one, the main line, goes on the on the on that one over there, and the return on this. And um, yeah, make sure to use proper hose clamps or uh, well, buy new ones as I did. So I'm going to trim them. To size of camera mount them and then we'll see if the car still starts oh and wait we've still got the this uh, power uh, connector hanging here we need to put that back through this plate um, and after the test we were going to put back everything and then we're done really done so the fuel pumps all all um, wired up Let's see what happens. Probably have to turn over a few times because uh, all lines are empty. But Papa, here we go. Now well, let's put everything back and enjoy the ride. Goodbye.